just felt this night. Captain Rogers and Iron Man are both gone. Who do you think's gonna lead the Avengers? I could lead them. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my brand new Marvel Eternals trailer video. We finally have an actual full trailer. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs. Obviously, they reference Avengers Endgame, Iron Man, Captain America. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're getting ready for Marvel Loki episodes. I'll be doing videos for all those, and we're doing a Disney Plus giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave your favorite moment from the trailer on the video. But if you couldn't tell, the song that they use in this trailer is The End of the World by Skeeter Davis. Very apropos because it's a reference to both Avengers Endgame, which they directly call out at the end of the trailer, in a reference to the plot of the movie, because the Earth is threatened with imminent destruction a couple different times across history, multiple times, the biggest being that giant storm cloud that they're all looking at at the end of the trailer, which is meant to signify the celestial host coming. Like a celestial threatening to destroy the Earth the same way you saw Eson the Searcher using the Power Stone to destroy an entire world in that first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. The events of the movie pick up right after Avengers Endgame, so everyone posts all the memes. Oh, here we go again. But I will chart the timeline as they jump around in time during the trailer because you see them at several different points in human history going back tens of thousands of years. But as the song starts playing, we're meant to be tens of thousands of years ago at the dawn of civilization when people were just starting to transition from the hunter-gatherer existence to living in towns learning to farm. What you're seeing here is the Eternals rolling up in their spaceship to ancient Mesopotamia, the cradle of real world civilization in a spaceship to begin their watch, so to speak. Post all your Game of Thrones jokes because we have Kit Harington, Jon Snow, and Richard Madden, Rob Stark in the movie. Next time I see you, you'll be dressed all in black and Kit Harington is playing Dane Whitman, the Black Knight during this movie. Since I'm going through the trailer shot by shot, I'll talk more about what's going on with his character when we get to that part of the trailer. But make all the Night's Watch references too, because now their watch begins as their spaceship literally rolls up so that they can watch over humanity. Time to take the black. The Eternals backstory in the movie is going to be a little bit different from what it is in the comics. So in the movie, the Celestials are still responsible for creating the Eternals, but the reason why they create them is a little bit different and the circumstances around their creation is a little bit different. In the original Jack Kirby comics, the Celestials show up to planet Earth and they begin experimenting with humans giving them powers with celestial energy, modifying them, turning them into the Eternals and the Deviants. The difference in the movie is that they actually create them separately and then the Eternals come to planet Earth. Based on descriptions of the movie, now the Celestials are still going around sort of experimenting with life all over the universe, like you see during the original Guardians of the Galaxy movie. But supposedly they create the Deviants first to watch over life, protect the life that they're experimenting on all over the universe. But supposedly eventually the Deviants start to hunt down the very life that they're supposed to protect. You sort of see a fight later in the trailer that's happening in present day where Kingo and Thena are both fighting one of the Deviants. Like this giant animal looking creature with all the celestial energy arcing all over its body. And supposedly, at least based on the descriptions, the Celestials send the Eternals to planet Earth to stop the Deviants from killing all the humans off and sort of watch over a Celestial egg that's growing inside the Earth. Like the Celestials are trying to create another Celestial and they're using the Earth to incubate that growing Celestial. 
So also the secret mission that the Eternals are there for is to watch over the Celestial that's growing and developing over the tens of thousands of years until it eventually hatches, grows, and comes out, threatening to destroy the Earth again. Like the song in the trailer says, it's the end of the world. But as the trailer implies, eventually the Eternals begin to think of humans as their children, so to speak. They begin to love them like they're part of their family, like they themselves are a family. So there's all of these themes about them helping humans, guiding them, not really interfering, but then finally interfering because it is the end of the world. That's also a bit of a reference to them not interfering with Avengers Endgame. I'll explain that in a second too because everyone's like, where were they when Thanos was attacking and snapping the Infinity Gauntlet? Sure could have used some of those celestial powers that they have. But you notice their ship, their costumes are covered in those cosmic symbols. They're the same symbols that you see all over the Celestials' bodies. You see the symbols rise up when they're using their powers as well. It's kind of Marvel trying to do a real-world looking example, a live-action looking example of the classic Kirby Crackle, which was Jack Kirby's way of depicting cosmic energy. They actually did the Kirby Crackle for real, like the actual Kirby version of it during Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. All of them share some of the same abilities in common, like enhanced durability, strength, and incredibly long lifespans. They're functionally immortal. They live longer than Asgardians. They all have some unique abilities, too. You see most of them during the trailer, so I'll point them out when we see them. But they set up the relationship between Cersei and Icarus. And it's also funny to see Jon Snow, Rob Stark, and another character named Cersei in a movie. Her name is based on Cersei from Greek mythology. So a lot of the humans over the years worship them as gods. And they inspire a lot of the gods that you see in different religions around Earth and human history. But there's meant to be a love triangle between her character Icarus and Kit Harington's Black Knight character in present day. The interesting thing about the Black Knight character is it is actually a title that's passed down through Dane Whitman's lineage. So the Black Knight comes from medieval mythology, like the original Black Knight, and then his family is cursed. You have the ebony blade and his suit of armor that gets passed down. It's the blade that's important. The blade carries the curse. But in present day, Dane Whitman becomes the latest Black Knight, so he takes up the title. It's just that he doesn't really learn about it until present day, like you see the dumbfounded look on his face. Don't worry, we'll talk about him in a second. This is a nice shot of the interior of their craft. You notice that it's actually from present day, though. Already big time jump, because this is meant to be Salma Hayek's Ajax character wearing a cowboy hat, which they definitely did not have in 10,000 BC. Here's a version of her in her full costume. Notice she has a different headpiece. Notice all the designs behind her, too, on that mural and some of the artifacts. They have depictions of all the animals of Earth. You see some artifacts around this room. There are a couple shots later in the trailer where you get a better look at this. So I'll talk about that as we sort of go through the trailer footage. Ajak is meant to be one of the leaders amongst their group. Icarus is technically their leader in the comics, one of the main characters. And you kind of see him present himself that way. Like later in the trailer where he's like, I could lead the Avengers. But amongst the Eternals, Ajak acts as sort of like a big sister to the others. Later in the trailer, you see all that footage of the Aztec city. Eventually, the Aztecs worship her as their god, Quetzalcoatl. This is Angelina Jolie's Athena character, obviously based on the Greek god Athena, goddess of the hunt. Then in another scene in the same room, you get a better look at it. You see Brian Tyree Henry's Fastos character, that sprite behind him on the table. Fastos was worshipped as the Greek god Hephaestus. His name inspired the name Hephaestus. It's a bit of the same situation with the other Eternals characters. But as the name implies, he makes things like the Greek god Hephaestus. In the comics, at least, he carries a hammer-like weapon that fires lightning bolts. You can make all the references to Thor wielding Mjolnir, his hammer that shoots lightning bolts, even though technically it's Thor that shoots lightning bolts. As he uses his powers to start making something, you see all the cosmic symbols, the celestial symbols, start emanating with energy. Like I said, it's the same for all the Eternals. Even though some of their powers are different, when they use their powers, you see the celestial energy patterns sort of emanate from them. But they have this really cool transition to the Marvel Studios logo as the celestial symbols sort of spread out, filling the frame. Marvel's been getting really creative with their newer intros in Marvel Phase 4. Then later you see what seems like the Eternals and Cersei teaching humans how to farm so that they can start living together in towns and eventually form cities. You see her changing the dirt into water, helping nourish the crops. One of her special powers is transmutation. She can change anything into anything else. She can also create perfect illusions too, which you kind of see later in the trailer I'll talk about. But then they start in with Salma Hayek's voiceover as Ajak. When she's giving this speech, she's talking to the other Eternals characters, and they use it in a montage chronicling their history on Earth. She talks about how they watched over and guided humanity and helped them progress technologically. Then you see Cersei's hand with her green sleeve here in the costume, handing a dagger with their cosmic symbols on it, like an Eternals dagger, to one of the early humans. B 
because the clothing here in this scene is the same as when their ship is rolling up to Mesopotamia in these early humans here, I think it's probably them introducing themselves to humans for the first time. This is Angelina Jolie's Thena character, seeming like she's helping train these city guards later in the timeline in Mesopotamia, like in this larger city many years later. Then everyone bows down in a separate scene in this same town, maybe from some other part of the movie, worshipping them as gods. Then Ajax says they've seen them accomplish wonders. The trailer jumps forward in the timeline again to ancient Babylon, but it's the Eternals having their own Avengers Assemble kind of moment, getting ready for a battle based on all this destruction, like there's some big fight that they're in the middle of. This is Makari on the left that you're seeing for the first time. She has super speed powers like the Flash, as you can see. Athena on her right, this is Gilgamesh next to her. He has crazy super strength in the comics, way beyond the other Eternals. He's kind of like their version of the Hulk, only he doesn't change form. As his name implies, the ancient Sumerian poem, The Epic of Gilgamesh, is meant to be based on him. This is Icarus next to him, and then this is the first scene with Kumail Nanjiani's Kingo character. His powers might be a little bit different in the movie, but he's mostly known as one of the greatest swordsmen on the planet. He's often depicted as fighting with two katanas in the comics. This is Makari sitting inside their spaceship inside that same room that we saw before with Fastos, reading from a pile of books that they've accumulated over the centuries, and you see artifacts from all over the world, all over human history in the timeline from ancient Europe, the suit of armor, crowns, things from ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, paintings from much more recently in history, and some of these books are from modern day, just meant to show you their continued influence over the years on humanity as they've developed. Makari is meant to be the inspiration for the Roman god Mercury and the Greek god Hermes. But as you can see from later in the trailer, they were around and amongst humans before the events of Avengers Infinity War. Like they knew who the Avengers were. They'd been watching the news in modern day before Thanos' snap. Then this scene is actually deceptive because this is Cersei walking through that same ancient Babylon city amongst all the people. But notice how she's wearing a modern day flannel shirt. And then they transition to the present day London. It's because she was using her powers to create a perfect illusion of the city based on her memories. Then Ajax voiceover talks about how they've never interfered over the years despite all the terrible things that have happened to humans. Then they show you some terrible things happening to humans across the years. Like this is what seems like a bunch of the conquistadors slaughtering the Aztec natives. Ajax hugging Fastos. They're all wearing modern day clothing. So maybe this is after the events of Avengers Endgame after they have their reunion and they sort of remember everything. But you see Icarus and a bunch of them in this small village, but it's in present day because Kingo is wearing modern day clothes and there's a camera crew behind him. You see Druig for the first time. He's kind of one of the black sheep of the family, so to speak, kind of a rogue, kind of like Loki. You see Druig using his powers. He can also transmute matter, has telekinesis, he can fly, he can project energy. He has a limited form of telepathy as well that you see later in the trailer. That's kind of like Scarlet Witch's telepathy. You see Thena in the middle of a fight with her big energy blade in that same small village that they keep going back to. This seems like a wedding that they're in the middle of or a big celebration in India. And then later in present day, after they got their memories back, funny that Jon Snow and Rob Stark will have a love triangle with a character named Cersei. This is another scene of Cersei using her powers to change this structure into water. Notice the celestial energy symbols all around it as she's using her abilities. This is Kingo in the middle of making a Bollywood movie in present day, or at least in modern day, before the snap, before Avengers Endgame. Kingo becomes a Bollywood star. But then he's using his abilities in that same small village that Druig was in in present day to defend the people against one of these deviants. This is the scene of Druig using his powers of telepathy to make everyone raise their weapons up, the regular humans. Like I said, it's a bit like Scarlet Witch using her telepathy on the sword agents during WandaVision. This scene of the volcano exploding might be from early history. It's kind of hard to tell based on the landscape. But the theme of the trailer is that the world is ending again. So I think this is meant to highlight that like, oh, the earth is being threatened many times throughout history. This is Sprite and some of the other Eternals on Kingo's private plane in present day. Notice the K on the door in the background. Remember, he's a Bollywood star, so he would be rich. This is Cersei with Kit Harington's Dane Whitman character in present day. It seems like she's just teaching him about the history of the Eternals because he's just completely dumbfounded. What is this sorcery? These storm clouds that they're watching seem like they're meant to signify the coming of the celestial host or a coming of a celestial. Usually they wind up being the main antagonist in any big Eternal story. Like the Deviants sound like they're the villains, but really the Celestials are the villains threatening to obliterate the Earth. 
then this is the full wide shot of all the Eternals introducing themselves to humans for the first time. Like I said, they keep going back to this same scene of them introducing themselves for the very first time. Then they have the tag scene of them sharing a meal in present day after the events of Avengers Endgame, after it seems like they've gotten all their memories back and had a reunion, and Sprite asks, who do you think is going to lead the Avengers now that Captain America and Iron Man are gone? Notice how she says they're both gone, not dead, which I think is funny. I mean, post all your theories about that. Iron Man is supposed to be dead. They're supposed to have burned the body and scattered his ashes across the lake next to his house. But there were all the theories on Falcon and Winter Soldier that people had about Captain America secretly being on the moon. So I just feel like that's a funny reference to that, them being gone, but technically not dead. But Icarus says, I could do it. And he's actually being serious. Like, I could actually go lead the Avengers. And the others just laugh at him like, yeah, right. But that's also meant to be a reference to the Eternals eventually crossing over with the Avengers in the next Avengers movie, like Avengers 5, crossing over with the other Marvel Cinematic Universe characters like Thor, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange. So it's like them using this trailer to introduce these really weird characters from these really cool, really weird Jack Kirby comics. They're not mutants, but they're just like the next step on the path to introducing X-Men in the MCU. Full-blown mutants, like Scarlet Witch's children, Billy and Tommy. Technically, they're mutants because they were born with their powers. So the whole idea with why they didn't help during Avengers Endgame is that at least in the Eternals comic book that this is based on, the Neil Gaiman comic book, one of Sprite's special powers is altering people's memories. So in that Neil Gaiman comic book, she makes all the other Eternals characters forget that they're Eternals. So they forget that they have powers, they forget who they are, and they just go about their lives living like normal humans. So that's the theory why they didn't help out during Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, but eventually they start getting their memories back and the story spins up into this big celestial plot. I'll also be interested to see if any of them actually got snapped during Avengers Infinity War. We'll find out about that pretty soon, I'm sure. And we'll probably get more footage with Kit Harington's Dane Whitman character because he is very important for the plot. But I think they wanted to use this first big trailer just to introduce you to the concept of the characters for people who have never read about the Eternals in the comics. But hopefully that explains what's going on during the Eternals movie. And hopefully there'll be some references to Thanos as well, because Thanos is an Eternal, but he's an Eternal that was born on Titan from a different group of Eternals. But everyone, let me know in the comments what's your favorite part of the trailer, and I will do more Eternals videos as we get more footage and learn more details about the film. But like I said, we have Loki episodes that are coming up real soon, so everyone click here for that brand new Loki trailer and Easter eggs, and click here for my brand new Venom 2 Let There Be Carnage trailer with Spider-Man Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys tonight.